Good morning again, Ash Class. It's Tuesday the 5th of May 2020, and as promised, it is a literacy day, so we'll be doing a bit of literacy in a bit, but before we talk about our learning, it's another special day for us in Ash Class. It's Harley's birthday. So, are you ready to have a little boogie for Harley's birthday? I know I am. Off we go. Happy birthday, Harley! Lots of love from all of us in Ash Class. Whew. Now onto our daily learning challenge. Now I think you're going to really enjoy this one, Harley, and everybody else in Ash Class. Um, it's still to do with recipes that we were learning about last week. Do you remember all the recipe learning we did? There was some really good learning last week about recipes and we're going to carry that on this week. Um, I found a story that I think is all to do with recipes. It says sandwiches in the title. Anyway, it's all to do with sandwiches. So we're going to have a read of that and then we'll have a think about what we're going to do next. Right, sit back, relax and enjoy the story, The Disgusting Sandwich. The Disgusting Sandwich by Gareth Edwards In a clump of trees, by the side of a park, there lived a badger. He was a very hungry badger and his tummy wouldn't stop rumbling. One day a boy came to the park. He had a sandwich with him. It had fresh white bread and peanut butter. It was a beautiful sandwich. The boy took his sandwich to the playground. He was about to take a bite when a girl bumped into him and it fell into the sand pit. Now the fresh white bread was covered in gritty sand. Well, said the little girl, you can't eat it now. It's disgusting. A squirrel found the sandwich. She didn't mind the sand. She carried the sandwich into a tree to share with her children. But they weren't good at sharing. And the sandwich dropped out of the tree and into a pond. Well, said the mother squirrel, we can't eat it now. It's disgusting. A frog saw the sandwich. It was floating in some goopy green pondweed that smelled of rotten eggs. The frog didn't mind the sand and the smelly green goop. He pulled a sandwich out to eat it on the path. But a boy on his scooter raced by and he had to jump out of the way. Now the sandwich had big black squish marks right across the middle. Well, said the frog, I can't eat it now. It's disgusting. Next, a crow saw the sandwich. She didn't mind the sand, the smelly green goop and the big black squish marks. She peeled the sandwich off the path and flew proudly up to her nest to give it to her mum. But a scary flying thing frightened her and she dropped the sandwich onto an ant's nest. Hundreds of ants crawled all over it. Well, said the crow's mum, I can't eat it now. It's disgusting. Soon a fox found the sandwich. He didn't mind the sand, the smelly green goop, the big black squish marks, all the hundreds of ants. He took it to be a present for a lady fox he liked. But when he opened his mouth to tell her how nice she looked, the sandwich fell into a pile of feathers that had somehow got there. Now the sandwich was covered in grimy old feathers. Well, said the fox's friend, I can't eat it now. It's disgusting. And she kicked the sandwich into a flower bed and went off to go through some bins. In amongst the flowers were some slugs. They didn't mind the sand, the smelly green goop, the big black squish marks, all the hundreds of ants, all the grimy old feathers. They slithered all over the sandwich and crisscrossed it with trails of slippery slime and oozy grey bubbles. The moon came out.
Finally, along came the badger. He was hungrier than ever. He gazed at the sandwich all covered in sand and smelly green goop and big black squish marks and hundreds of ants and grimy old feathers and slippery slime and oozy grey bubbles glistening in the moonlight. His tummy rumbled. So he ate up all the slugs. But he didn't eat the sandwich. It was too disgusting. I'm glad the badger didn't eat it in the end. Badgers normally eat slugs, so that's okay. But that sandwich looked so disgusting. And there are much nicer things to eat, really, aren't there? Things that won't make him poorly. Hey! I've just had a brilliant idea. You guys know a lot about recipe writing, don't you? We could show him how to make a nice sandwich, a delicious, tasty sandwich. I love that idea. And then we could send him the recipes and he could make all different kinds of nice sandwiches. Well, he won't have to eat yucky ones, disgusting ones anymore. <gasps> right. OK, so task B today is to listen to my instructions for how to make a jam sandwich. Now, whilst I'm doing that, you might want to be writing notes or drawing pictures just to remember the steps that you have to follow. Yeah, you might just do that. You don't have to, but for some people, it helps to do a little plan. So I'm going to do that. You can do your plan. That will be task B um, is to watch and to listen to my instructions. And then we will talk about task C. OK, ready? Here's how to make a jam sandwich. So here's one way of making a jam sandwich. I've got my title here, how to make a jam sandwich. And as you can see, there's a person here who's just made one. So they seem happy with my instructions. And as we know, recipes that need to begin with a you will need list, a list of all the ingredients. So you will need two slices of bread because my uh, sandwich is going to have two slices. Sometimes you can make a sandwich with one slice of bread and fold it, can't you? You'll need to choose what you want to do for your sandwich. Butter or spread, so that's here. Jam, yep, and a knife. So not just the ingredients, but also the equipment you might need. So a knife. Now, obviously, if your recipe is not a jam sandwich, are you going to need jam in your ingredients? No. So, depends on what your sandwich is going to be as to what ingredients you'll need. Yours might be different. Okay, step one. First, get two slices of bread. Next, use the knife to spread some butter onto both slices. Do you like the pictures that go with it? I think they're really helpful, aren't they, to show what to do. After that, oh sorry, number three. After that, use a knife to spread the jam on top of the butter on one of the slices of bread. Do you know what I've noticed they've got here? On top of, that's a preposition. Do you remember we were doing the prepositions the other day when we were learning about the tiger that came to tea? You wrote some brilliant prepositions. They can be really helpful in instructions as well. Number four, then put one slice of bread on top of the other to make a sandwich. Step five, after that, cut the sandwich in half with the knife. Step six, finally, eat it. And that's the end. And that's how we make our sandwich. So I'll just go back through again really quickly how to make a sandwich. All the things you will need. So when you're writing your recipe, you'll need to put your title of your recipe at the beginning. And then you'll need your ingredients list or your you will need list. And then you'll need to explain your steps in order. First, get two slices of bread. Next, use the knife to spread some butter onto both slices. After that, use a knife to spread the jam on top of the butter on one of the slices of bread. Then, put one slice of bread on top of the other to make a sandwich. After that, cut the sandwich in half with the knife. Finally, eat it. OK, so that's my sandwich instructions. Yours will be different to mine. Probably even better, I'll imagine.
Now on to task C. That's how to make a jam sandwich. Task C today is to write your own recipe instructions for the badger. So I explained how to make a jam sandwich. You don't have to do a jam sandwich. You could do any flavour sandwich you like, as long as you've got the ingredients and your grown up says it's OK. Um, it doesn't even have to be bread if you haven't got bread. It could be anything at all that is something you can write a recipe for. OK, so you can be as creative as you need to be. And that's it for me today. And I will see you tomorrow for some geography learning. See you then. Bye.